Hello friends, this is Carrie, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we have four stories out of the Entitled Parent subreddit, plus one story out of the Entitled People subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is by Contron. Karen is confused for getting the police called on her because she broke into my house after I went on holiday. Backstory. This happened in 2015 and it makes me wonder how dumb people are. I was on holiday with my mom and dad in Spain for a week. To make sure our house stayed well maintained, we would give two to three copies of our house keys to our neighbors and told them to make sure nothing got taken. One of them was Karen, who was the only person in her family who was entitled. The story. So my family was back from our holiday, and by the time we got back, we were so tired, we left our luggage in the hall and went straight to our rooms to sleep. It was about three hours later when we heard something like glass break in our living room. If you read my other stories, then you know I play airsoft. So I had a pistol with me. I took it out and loaded it with BBs, airsoft bullets slash pellets, and went downstairs with my dad, who was looking for his airsoft rifle, but it wasn't in the case, so he followed me down. I walked into the room to see Karen trying to rip the TV off the wall. In the process, she knocked over a large vase, which made a large crack that went through the house, and the conversation went like this. Me. What the F do you think you're doing? Karen. Borrowing your TV? What is it? look like. Dad, you are trespassing. Get off my property now. Karen, you gave me a key, so I have a right to take all your stuff, as having a key means I own the house, so go away. At this point, Karen notices the gun and goes white. I take advantage and say, go over to the kitchen. Next to the kitchen is a small bathroom, so as soon as she's near it, my dad pushes her in and locks the door. Afterwards, we call the police. About 20 minutes later, they arrive. When Karen heard them, she started screaming through the the bathroom door saying that we kidnapped her and how we refused to let her go. I tell the police what happened and offered to show them camera footage as we have cameras all around the house. They took the footage and took Karen into custody until they looked until they looked over the footage. To sum this all up, Karen was stealing from us for the whole week with stuff like radios and phones. We pressed charges and she got 18 months in jail for robbery and trespassing. I might not be that smart, but I'm a little confused as to how Karen would get I own your house house out of we're going on vacation for a week could you please watch our house out of that and that she's allowed to just take whatever because the other thing is was she under the impression that the op and their family weren't coming back to which case when they did come back karen was in one a hell of a predicament and i'm actually surprised she didn't get more time the other thing that i'm unclear about is why did she get such little time was it because of a plea deal that she made or was it because she still had all of the stolen goods at her house and she didn't sell them yet because then that would have been what, distribution of stolen property or something like that? I don't really know the law, but what do you guys think? Please leave your comment in the comment section down below. Moving on to our next story. Our next story is by Jail Cops. Karen demanded I break her son out of jail. So some quick background. I work in a county jail and I'm the guy you want working the floor, housing units, and roving. I'm pretty good at dealing with and talking to inmates, and I'm even better when we're past the point of talking. That being said, every officer is required to work a guard station at least once a month even me. These stations are just dealing with the public, answering phones and or opening and closing doors. Okay, cool. On one such guard station shift, Karen storms in. She's a southern kind of Karen. Totally unkempt hair, ratty clothes, and at least five missing teeth. A criminal record that's largely drug-related charges. You know the type. She marches into the lobby, up to my bulletproof window. I hit the intercom, and the following conversation ensues. Me. Can I help you? Karen. My son, EK, needs to be released right now. He served his time and needs to come home. Me. Looking up EK in the jail computer. Ma'am, he has a hold out of Blah Blah County. He will have to go to court and serve time there first. Karen. No. He needs to be released now. His time here is done. He can go to Blah Blah County after he comes home. Me. Already over it. Ma'am, this isn't a hotel. The law requires that he's in custody until he answers for his crimes that he's been charged with. If I release EK, I'll be fired and arrested. Karen. Aren't you supposed to serve and protect? Me. Yes, I am. EK was charged with domestic assault and has a felony charge in Blah Blah County. Keeping him in custody serves and protects the public. 
Karen, how dare you? My son is a good boy. He doesn't deserve this. The other inmates are threatening him. What are you going to do to serve and protect him? Me, suppressing a grin. Well, ma'am, I'll go ahead and make an announcement to the other inmates to leave him alone and that he called his mommy and she's not happy with their behavior. I'm sure that won't put him in any danger. Karen. I demand to speak to your supervisor. Me. Knowing that Sarge is about the last guy you want to irritate, it would be my pleasure to let you speak to my supervisor. Sarge arrives and asks Karen what the issue is. She rants and raves for about 15, I kid you not, minutes about her sweet boy being wrongfully incarcerated, my behavior, how EK is in danger, and he's served his time. She concluded that if we didn't release EK that she would raise hell in the lobby. At this point, Sarge raises his eyebrows in a look I know pretty well. It's a look that means I'm genuinely impressed that you're that stupid, Sarge. I remember you. You've been to jail before. I wonder where EK got it. Karen goes into a rant again. Sarge cuts her off. Sarge, you so much as fart in my lobby and OP is going to arrest you for disorderly. Every officer was deputized. I had been through police academy and, and patrol to boot. EK is going to pay for what he's done on our schedule, not yours. And certainly not his. You're going to leave my jail now and never come back. Now why don't you go outside and play hide and go F yourself? Karen doesn't even think about mouthing off again. She all but runs out of the lobby. Sarge and I have a laugh about it later. Amazingly, Karen never filed any complaints. Not that this would have gotten her anywhere. This is how the South do. I imagine Karen was one of those parents who never disciplined her kid. When he got in trouble at school, would always take his side over the parents, the other students, the other faculty. I mean, going to jail to get your son out of jail? just because you think he shouldn't be there even though he's held up on some pretty serious charges? I mean, that's a whole new level of delusional. I mean, I'm pretty sure that most people in jail probably don't wanna be in jail. But what do you guys think about Karen and this story? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Moving on to our next story. Our next story is posted by Ken Ham F. EPs wanna control what the entire restaurant does. This happened in 1989 when my father was working part-time as a cook when he was in college. You could see the kitchen from the restaurant and the restaurant from the kitchen. And this whole thing happened close to the kitchen, so my dad witnessed everything. He was just finishing up the last order of his shift when he saw a family of six enter the restaurant. Two parents with three children and a grandmother who seemed senile, at least 100 years old. Back then, many restaurants were divided in two. Half of the restaurant was for smokers and the other half was for non-smokers smokers. The parents of the family had the signature entitled parent look. The kids were well behaved enough. It looked like the two boys were actually raised by the older sister who was around 17 at the time. The parents demanded to be seated at a specific table which was in the smoking area. Although they were warned they insisted on sitting there. They sat down and a minute later, they called one of the waitresses. They asked if they could please have the other patrons stop smoking around their children and their old grandmother, who might fall dead at any moment. The waitress kindly told them that they were seated in the smokers area and they could be moved to a non-smoker table if they desired. The entitled parents refused and said that the table held emotional significance to the entitled mother and the grandmother, who was apparently her mother. They got incrementally furious, demanding other patrons put out their cigarettes. At this point, even even their own daughter had taken the side of the waitress and tried to explain to them they were seated in a smoking area of the restaurant. Many arguments and, and a manager call later, the entitled parents were told they could either stay where they are and deal with the smoking, move to a non-smoking area of the restaurant, or be forced to leave. They ultimately moved to a non-smoking table farther away from my dad, with the grandmother saying to them, it's okay, it's okay, over and over. So he couldn't hear what happened next, but he didn't see or hear any more problems. Too long didn't read. EPs bring their senile grandmother and young children to a restaurant, sit in a designated smoker area and demand other people stop smoking while refusing to move to another non-smoking table. I remember when restaurants were divided into smoking areas and non-smoking areas. Actually, I even remember probably like six or seven years years ago, I went into a McDonald's in Missouri when I was visiting family that still had smoking areas and non-smoking areas. We had gone back since then. 
they had all non-smoking areas. The thing I'd want to know is if that table had always been in a smoking area and yet, you know, the mother and the grandmother had always gone to that restaurant on a specific anniversary or birthday or something like that, then what was the point in complaining about smokers being in that area, especially if it's always been in a smoking area? It just seems stupid to me, but what do you guys think? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Moving on to our next story. If you've been watching until here and are enjoying my content, please put some heart emojis in the comment section down below. Our next story is by WTF DD DM. EM demands my Pokemon cards that I stole from her brat. I have a binder that has the first two Pokedex Pokemon in order with a lot of rare cards in the back, plus a lot of different Mewtwo cards as he's my favorite. My collection is my pride and joy and I would die protecting it. Just kidding. There is a pretty chill comic book and card store by my house and when I go, I bring my binder with me so I could see what cards I have so I don't get duplicates and because the owner likes to see what new ones I have. One day, as I'm at the counter showing them to the guy in charge, chatting about what I want to buy, a kid about 10 comes over and watches intently. Staring at my binder, he asked if I would trade a pretty rare card I was putting into my binder. I tell him, nah, I'm good. He whines and asks again. I tell him, nah. The guy looks pretty annoyed at the whining kid, but the kid soon leaves, only to come back with a woman who is glaring and demanding I return the cards I stole from her child. I asked her what she was talking about, and she demands to see my binder. I asked her if she was kidding, and she snapped that, I need those cards you stole from EK, and I'm tired of people stealing from my children. I wanted to face palm, but thankfully the guy in charge tells her to beat it. Well, she tried to grab my binder, and I quickly gave it to the guy behind the counter and told her if she needs cards so much then how about she buy some like the rest of us peasants. No idea what went through her head but she threatened to call the cops as as she left. I simply waited around and bought more cards. Kind of disappointed that no cops came. Here's what I think is going on. The EK either learned from his mom or from somewhere else that if he doesn't get what he wants, he can use his mom as muscle or as a thug to steal it for him. And all he has to say to her is that something was stolen from him. And because the mother is too stupid or doesn't care to actually inquire as to what was stolen or if it was uh, her son's to begin with, she just walks over and either strong arms the person into giving it to her or she browbeats them into doing it. But what do you guys think? Think. Please leave your comment in the comment section down below. Moving on to our final story. Our final story today is posted by Violet Archer. Cake Insurance Karen. Last summer, I found a small part-time job for myself at a bakery. It was only a 10-minute walk from my house. I worked the register, restocked the display cases, and boxed the cakes and so forth for orders. It's an older bakery, definitely needed to be revamped, but it wasn't too bad. I only quit due to disliking the social environment. My co-workers were a-holes. I started my normal shift around 9 a.m. I was working with a co-worker I'll call Nora. Nora started her opening shift at 6 a.m. She was waiting for the clock to hit 10 so that she could leave when the front door swung open, the bell at the top of the door catching my attention. I was in the back getting the macaroons for the display case. Nora seemed surprised at the sight of an elderly woman entering the store, which will, which will soon be explained as to why. The lady, we shall call Karen, had a partially dented box from our bakery in hand. The clear top smeared with icing from the inside. Nora raised an eyebrow and put on a fake customer-pleasing smile. Nora, can I help you? Karen scrunched up her nose in disgust as she put the cake on the counter. Karen, I had gotten into a car accident. My cake flew off the seat and went everywhere. Both Nora and I seemed confused as to how she managed to do so much as that. I finally spoke up. Me. Ma'am, may I ask what happened? Nora opened the box as I spoke with Karen. Karen, I had to make a sudden stop due to someone speeding through a stop sign and the cake just flew forward. Thankfully, the box was taped closed or else she would have a di disastrous icing mess in her car. Nora glanced at me, then at the box, causing me to look. The cake itself wasn't too damaged, but the icing on top was totaled. You can see it originally said happy birthday something. Karen, don't you see? My cake is ruined. Ruined. Can I get a refund? Like cake insurance or something? I froze. Cake insurance? This lady quite literally said cake insurance. What the hell is cake insurance? I try to hold back a smile at the thought. Nora seemed to do the same as well. 
Karen. Well, Nora, I'll have to ask the manager, ma'am, but I did give you this cake and I told you to leave it on the floor to prevent it from sliding and I had placed it there for you, Karen. Why would I leave it on the floor? It makes no difference where you put it. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'll have to ask the manager about the cake, but we're required to place it on the floor of your car to keep it from sliding. I got cut off. Karen. I want to speak to the manager now. Of course, the commotion gets the attention of my boss who is in the back eating a burrito. God bless that woman. She walks out in front and politely asks what the problem is. Karen, these girls won't give me a new cake. I demand a new cake after the disaster that had happened to mine. My boss, now confused, goes to ask what had happened. She makes an excuse saying she'll ask our cake decorator what he can do. We go to the back and explain the story. We all return back out to the front and our manager explains the cake car deal. Boss, the cake doesn't slide as much on the floor, nor can it flip or fall in any way, Miss Karen. So do I get a new cake? Boss. No, I'm sorry. Do you need any paper towels for your car? My boss would have given her at least a redo on the icing since she normally is a kind-hearted woman, but she has a distaste for nasty customers. Karen huffs and groans and stomps away, leaving us with a disheveled cake. As I said before, the cake itself was fine, a chocolate and vanilla with mocha filling. Needless to say, we had a delicious snack in place of our usual lunch, even got to bring some home. I never forgot the glorious two words, cake insurance. This is another problem with Karen's. They can't follow simple instructions. So she makes a sudden stop and her cake gets messed up. And now she demands a refund for her own stupidity? No, it doesn't work that way. Either follow the smart instructions the first time or, you know, or this stuff is going to continue happening. Anyway, that's all the stories I have for today. Links to the original Reddit posts will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. If you enjoy my content, please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.